Hello everyone, my name is Ishan Basredi. I go to River Hill High School in Maryland. It's June 30th at 10 p.m. My project is Parkinson's prevalence across the world, revising a standard methodology. So first a bit of an introduction beyond that, some extracurriculars which I like to participate in are debate, tennis, model UN, guitar and piano. I like to do this in my free time and I'm a rising junior. Some of my interests are global health, international relations, world cultures, history, politics and gardening. I completed this project under the supervision of a researcher from Louisiana State University. So here's a map of Parkinson's prevalence around the world from 1990 to 1996. So the prevalence rate of a disorder is essentially a measure of the percentage of people who may have or diagnosed with or afflicted by a certain condition at a certain time or interval of time. So basically red means more of the percentage of the population has Parkinson's disease, and blue means a lot lower percentage of the population has Parkinson's disease. So that would be the prevalence rate. As you can see, there is a higher prevalence rate in most developed nations, as well as a lower prevalence rate in developing nations, as you can see in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. This could be due to many different factors. For example, in developing countries, there could be more industrial pollution, processed foods, lifestyle differences, which could result in higher rates of Parkinson's prevalence and aging as well. And there could be the contrary for developing countries. But there could also be the factor that people simply are not diagnosed. They don't know what Parkinson's disease is. They don't know if they have Parkinson's disease. So that could also result in a lower rate in developing nations. And these are confounding variables that we need to watch out for when we're having studies. So some interesting facts, the rate of prevalence can be as high as 0.928% in East Turkestan in China, as pictured on the right. That's a very high rate. The rate of prevalence can be as low as 0% apparently in Benin, which was likely inaccurate due to different variables such as uh, there not being safe access to certain areas in Benin to measure in the study, or there could be poor health care. There are many different types of study designs. So first, some background about Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's is a major neurodegenerative disorder which affects individuals from Canada to Papua New Guinea. So this is a really global problem. There's, in the last three decades, there's been increasing prevalence globally, and there needs to be more research into treatments and cures. This is a real global health issue. The prevalence of Parkinson's differs in different countries, as I had explained. Some discrepancies may be partially caused not by any sort of actual difference, but differences in methodology of studies. So a study that works in Albania, where people have access to medical help and are aware, may not work in a poorer and less educated place such as Benin. Thus, it may be difficult to compare different studies' data, and I wanted to gather more data regarding prevalence rates and different methodologies to consider different effects. So my research question was, how do Parkinson's prevalence and methodology of studies regarding prevalence differ in different countries and relate to each other. And my hypothesis was there is a correlation and possible cause and effect relationship between estimated prevalence rates of Parkinson's disease and methodology, such as what type of study is conducted, where it is conducted, and sample size. Now my rationale and basis was examining the relationship between prevalence and methodology studies that find prevalence may provide reasons for large discrepancies in prevalence rates that could have been the result of study design. Now, the design of a study likely affects the outreach of surveys and actual representative value surveys have. So that means differences in the actual rate and the studies that uh, serve the data, sorry, that studies find. So this information can be used to make future studies more effective for world regions and distributing treatment. So my methodology for studying methodologies was I found prevalence rates for countries across the world by finding previous studies in PubMed, Google Scholar, and JSTOR. I use the search terms Parkinson's prevalence in insert country name. I analyzed methodologies in those studies and I found two. First, retrospective database analysis, which is going through prior taken data found in, for example, databases and using that to generalize the rate. For example, the amount of people diagnosed with Parkinson's in a country by certain factors such as uh, drug prescriptions or diagnosis codes. And there's door-to-door -door studies, which is obviously your traditional study going around and taking surveys. So factors that create differences in data could be methodologies of studies and actual regional differences. So here's a map of countries I could not find data about 
readily. This could be because there simply was no studies taken or there's a poor healthcare system, poor interest in finding data for these countries. That's a major problem because as you can see, we have many countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, which are countries which face healthcare issues, which do not have rates. So if we want to tackle this global trend, we need to examine the rates in more different countries. So I've focused on four studies I would like to focus on right now, at least, to present my findings. So first is Bureau et al. in Czechia, second, Carreira et al. in France, and third, Dachin et al. Tanzania, and fourth, Drums et al. in Turkish Kurdistan. So Bureau et al. in Czechia. It was a retrospective analysis. They went through national health information system data, so that is previously taken database for the whole nation. They used a strong checklist for criteria, which was diagnosis code ICD-10 for Parkinson's disease into international classification of diseases. Codes were counted from 2012 to 2018. They found a growing rate in comparison to previous data of 0.276%, which is not that large, not very small either, can be expected of a developed nation. And it seems this is a pretty solid study design for a developed country. Then you have Career et al. in France, which is also retrospective. They used the PMSI and SNRM databases from the French Healthcare Fund. However, in this case, instead of using diagnosis codes, they use drug prescriptions as an indicator, which may have resulted in an abnormally high rate, as you can see on the screen, because these drugs may be issued to non-PD patients with similar conditions as well. However, the authors did note the number of people actually receiving neurology consultation is far too low. Then you have Dachin et al. in Tanzania. This was instead a door-to-door -door survey and questionnaire. Um, it was in the rural high district and it had a growing rate, but very low at 0.02%. This could be because people were not educated to know that they had Parkinson's disease and a lack of trusted consultors and professionals resulted in low diagnoses. And that's why it's important, as done in this study, Durmas et al. in Turkish Kurdistan, to have a specialist following around the main researcher group to diagnose individuals if they did not already have a diagnosis for Parkinson's disease, thus diagnosing more individuals and reflecting a more accurate rate. Although it was still a very low rate, because the specialist screened participants, it can be assumed that this was a more accurate rate. So key takeaways here is that door-to-door -door studies may exclude inhabitants not present at the time of studying. They may exclude individuals who don't know what PD is or undiagnosed. However, it can be executed in all areas with comparable confounding factors. And still, retrospective database studies may exclude marginalized inhabitants without healthcare access and not ideal in areas without healthcare access and higher levels of poverty. You simply cannot have database studies in certain areas, such as in Africa, where databases simply don't exist and don't include a majority of inhabitants. Thus, I think that we need, when looking forward, a standard methodology. This means we need one methodology and using that, we can compare the rates found from these studies more accurately. We can block for any other confounding variables that are presented. We can compare prevalence from different regions to allow for further study that can help allocate medical resources equally and efficiently globally in order to increase fair practices treatment in disadvantaged communities and countries especially. I think the most reasonable methodology would be a universal door-to-door -door study with a trained medical professional. So this works in all areas. You can just simply go and survey with the medical professional in virtually any country that is open. And it has the same confounding variables. You can't eliminate all confounding variables in studies. However, if you standardize them, the data will still be comparable. And we need a trained medical professional as well to make these data more accurate. So. Key takeaway, looking forward, we need a standard methodology to make sure that we do not have different uh, erroneous factors impacting the rate we find so that we can distribute healthcare more efficiently and equally across the world. Thank you for my listening to my presentation. Here are my image credits, here are my references, and you can contact me here if you have any further questions. Thank you very much. Bye. Mm -hmm.